Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ESMWF, the GFS Ensembles, the UK Met Office run. We'll also go through the UK Met Office weather warnings as we have a yellow warning for rain in the east and we'll have a look at the live radar and as you can see we've got some heavy rain in the east where we could be seeing the potential for some disruption. We'll also have a look at the GM run, um, which has come out with a pretty much direct northerly. And we could be seeing the first hints of winter if that sort of pattern came off in the 7 to 10 day time frame. We'll have a look at that in more detail and the potential of seeing some very cold conditions, at least for this time of year, especially in the north. So do stay tuned for that towards the middle of the video. So if we do first have a look at the live radar, you can see we've got a quite a showery sort of outlook at the, morrow, uh, at the moment. Sorry, You can see the weather front that has brought the heavier rain in the west and to some areas in the east is now spreading offshore. We've got a lot of lighter showers behind it, a few heavier of course, and we have the sort of yellow warning zone tossed across East Anglia up to north, towards sort of northeast England. You can see most of the warning zone is not seeing um, heavy rain, if not really seeing any rain at all. However, you can see there are some very heavy showers sort of sparking off um, in around here, just to the north, sort of Braintree, getting up, um, getting up uh, into sort of East Anglia area. And they do look like, in the sort of the forecast, they're going to be pretty stationary. So we could be seeing a lot of rain falling in a short period of time across these areas over the course of this afternoon. We could see the other rain around here pep up as well and that is what's forecast however looking at the live radar i would say maybe uh, the forecast is overdone it a little bit but we'll have to keep an eye out over the course of the next few hours so if you are in this in east anglia maybe even essex as well and down to kent do keep an eye out on the radar as these heavy showers could be very slow moving um, and could bring a lot of rain in a short period of time giving some potential disruptions if you do have a look at the weather warning, you can see it has been moved eastwards. It was updated um, earlier this morning. Uh, and you can see many areas missing the worst, but heavy showers may lead to localised flooding and disruption to travel. Again, 40 60 millimetres potentially in a relatively short period of time. Surface flooding, maybe some transport disruption as well. Uh, many places will see smaller amounts. Of course, look at that live radar. Very few areas actually seeing very heavy rain, but when we do see it, it could be disruptive as well. And it could ease later. Uh, it will ease later this evening. But as I said, it could be very slow moving. So do keep an eye out for that. If we do now go have a look at the GFS, which is giving us a really mixed bag over the last few days. Um, some days we've been getting really nice high pressure building over the top of the UK, bringing almost heat wave like conditions um, for sort of the end of September, start of October. Other runs are bringing direct northerly, similar to we're going to see in the GM in a minute, um, with almost wintry conditions coming. Now this latest GFS is a bit of a mixed bag really, you can see early next week we do see high pressure building in and if you have a look at the upper air temperatures you can see relatively mild. In the north there would be weather fronts of course as we've got lower pressure but for the south we could be seeing decent temperatures getting up into the low 20s potentially. Beyond that a cold front does sweep through bringing some cooler air before we just go unsettled with this low pressure sitting out in the Atlantic just giving us periods of rain. And what we're not seeing in this latest GFS is this ridge that's out in the Atlantic building up towards Greenland. That's what some of the other models and ensembles are showing with much cooler temperatures coming in for the north. But we're not seeing that on this latest GFS. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that. But you can see in the longer term just generally westerly patterns with cold and warm fumps spreading through. And right towards sort of 300 hours beyond, we do build higher pressure over the top of the UK with southeasterly winds. Could be seeing very warm conditions, uh, maybe even some thundery conditions that we see a bit of a cut-off flow developing. So we'll have to keep an eye, of course, on what happens, but the GFS is really throwing out a mixed bag at this stage. You can see, though, evidently, because of this build of pressure over towards the UK and up towards Iceland, we are seeing winter arrive across Scandinavia and parts of Russia and Eastern Europe with a flood of cold air in from the Arctic. So you can see it does look like these northerly winds, which are going to be bringing colder temperatures towards the end of September, early October, will be hitting somewhere across Europe. At this stage, we're a little bit unsure, um, but we'll have to keep an eye on it because if it does hit the UK, we could be seeing some frosts um, and the potential, um, and only the potential, of maybe some wintry showers over towards Scotland and higher ground, especially on Scotland and maybe even into England, Wales and Ireland as well over, over higher ground, low lying areas. It's pretty much too early at this stage. 
um, unless we saw some exceptionally cold upper air conditions. Uh, but we're not seeing that at this stage. So we'll keep an eye on it, but um, we just keep an eye uh, on what happens with this sort of northerly and this build of pressure towards the end of the month. If we do have a look at the GM, which is a very cold run. Uh, so if we do go through it, you can see generally low pressure at the moment. And then you see low pressure diving southwards and high pressure with big northern blocking up towards Greenland, blocking out these lows towards northern Canada. And you can see we build in a direct northerly wind with cold air coming down from Iceland. Um, you can see it's getting moderated by the sea, so towards the surface, we're not quite seeing the very cold air reach, especially towards sort of southern England. But towards Scotland, we're getting the minus five isotherm through. And if we do zoom into the United Kingdom, Look, you can see very cold air is coming in across Scotland. Zero degree ice firm covered the whole of the country. And if we go to to, uh, to dew points, you can see below freezing across Scotland, maybe even northern England, and just a few degrees above freezing the dew point across England and Wales, and maybe into southern England getting down towards sort of two or three degrees. Now remember, for snow and wintry showers in general, you need a dew point below freezing because that is the point at which water condenses. Um, so you need it below freezing. Um, to get wintry droplets, of course. Um, however, it also does play an important role in sort of frost formation. So, of course, you want to dew point. Uh, if dew point is the same as the surface temperature, then you get condensation um, on the ground and in the, on the surfaces, and that's where we get frost forming as that freezes. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens, but if we did see dew points like this and with this cold upper air conditions, we could be seeing some frosts and the potential for some wintry showers over the hills where we do have these below freezing dew points. So if we do have a look at more detail at this GM run, if we do run through, you can see at the moment we do have warmer sector sort of exiting um, and then we have some quite warm upper air conditions coming in. Um, towards the middle of this week as we do have that build of pressure we could be seeing some decent temperatures with that and we'll have a look at that in a minute then we see a cold front sweep through with pretty chilly conditions returning for all and we see another build of warm air as i said warmer and colder sectors are going to be coming through the country uh, or for the british isles at times however as we head towards the end of the run you can see the cold air starting to come in from the north and the northwest and right towards the end of the run you can see the minus five line is in towards northern Scotland, getting into Northern Ireland, Northern England, and the zero-degree ice firm is through pretty much the whole of the British Isles. If we do have a look at the temperature, you can see over the coming days, just generally around mid to high teens, maybe 20 degrees in a few spots, low teens further north. We do see that warmer set to come through uh, towards sort of next weekend. We could be seeing temperatures maybe 20, 21 degrees, but of course it's going to have cloud and rain around. However, as we head right towards the end of the run, you can see by Tuesday the 28th, Chilly conditions in the north, five or six degrees across the Scottish mountains, many areas of England, uh, Wales, into Ireland as well, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, um, are going to be seeing temperatures struggling around 10 degrees. Maybe in the far south we could see 13, 14 degrees as the cold hasn't quite reached there. And overnight, Wednesday the 29th, you can see temperatures dropping down into the mid-single digits, if not getting colder than that. Across Scotland we could be seeing one, two degrees feeling really, really chilly, and even across northern England, into parts of the northwest, two, three, four degrees, and of course, in sort of frost hollows, it could drop colder than that, and we could be seeing frosts, or maybe even some wintry showers over northern hills, so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with this, but could be a little chilly setup coming up here, but again, it is subject to change, as you saw by the GFS run, um, it all depends on where that high pressure does build up northwards. If we do have a look at the ECMs OEF, just to finish up, you can see um, we do have a lot of low pressure pushing in over the coming days. And then right towards the end of the run, we have a similar pattern to the GM, where we do see a ridge of high pressure up towards Greenland, but it doesn't quite make it all the way, so it does topple, and we do pull in, um, just, uh, it just sort of topples over, and we do pin low pressure again. And you can see there is some colder air there, but it's not nowhere near as cold as the GM does go. Um, so still chilly, uh, but nothing too, uh, not nothing near as cold as the G GM. If we do have a look at the latest um, from the GFS Ensembles from the 6 o'clock run, you can see over the next sort of week or so, it's going to be really up and down temperatures. Pretty typical of a zonal westerly flow with a lot of uh, warmer sectors and cooler sectors. You can see for London in the southeast, it's going to be variable rainfall. We are seeing periods of very dry weather, other periods of more showers and rain. But of course, as ever, we've got this sort of 
Euro high towards um, sort of Scandinavia and down into Europe, and that's going to be continually holding off these low pressure systems, um, slowing them down, and that's why we're seeing a pattern like we have today. Where the weather front sort of stalls, sort of breaks down, and we do see some heavy rain in times, but many areas in central areas and eastern areas don't see a lot of rain at all, whereas uh, whereas Ireland and western England, northwest England, up towards Scotland, and western Scotland especially, seem quite a deluge. So it's just going to have to depend on what happens with the weather fronts and how progressive these low-pressure systems are. However, you head towards sort of day 8, day 9, towards the end of September, you see a big drop-off in temperatures, down to around 1, 2 degrees, 850 HPA, some getting even colder than that, getting down to what sort of what the GM was going for. You can see the operation one is a little bit of an outlier with a lot of sort of up and down and going quite a far above the average of the ensembles, but generally look colder than average, unsettled, uh, which is pretty typical of low pressure sitting over the top of the UK. And colder than average means northerly or northwesterly wind, what we saw on the GFS and for a sort of for a, for a time on the GFS, uh, so what we saw on the GM for a time we saw on the GFS, and a little bit we saw on the ECMWF as well. If we have a look at dew point, which also does show us sort of the air mass, you can see dropping quite significantly. Generally, winds from the west or southwest will have quite a warm dew point, simply because they've got a lot of moisture in the air. You can see for a northerly or northwesterly airflow, the dew points are a little bit lower. And you can see really struggling around 3-4 degrees in London, and I suspect it will be colder when we have a look at Glasgow in a minute. So we do go back to the AN50 HPA uh, precipitation. If you have a look at Glasgow, you can see a lot of up and down over the coming week or so. Typical, of course, of what zonal flow with west, uh, with warmer and cooler sectors. You can see a lot of rainfall over the next few weeks. You can see, of course, similar timing to London, sort of 27th, 28th. Temperatures really dropping down to around 0 degrees, 850 HPA, if not colder than that. Um, you can see, again, GFS operation was a bit of an outlier. Um, and again, cold north uh, to northwesterly winds. If you have a look at the dew point, you can see once again, dew point is dropping after the next sort of week or so to around sort of two, three, four degrees. Um, and some of the ensembles are even going quite sustained below freezing, like this ensemble member here, ensemble member number 29, um, which is very, very cold for the first week of October. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens. Um, and at this stage, it's still a little bit up in the air, but we are continually seeing these colder runs come out. If we lastly have a look at sn new, snow depth de uh, new snow depth, and you can see for Glasgow, we do have a snow spike um, from one solar member number three for the morning of the 4th of October. Now, it is about 0.2 centimetres, so it's literally light showers. However, it's still showing us that there is the potential, especially over higher ground, of seeing maybe some snow towards the end of September, early October. And it's just something we need to keep uh, up to date with. If we finally go through the UK Met Office ru uh, run, just have a look at what we're going to see over the next five days. You can see the heavy rain spreading in the east at the moment, sort of pepping up over the course of this afternoon and evening, but really fading away overnight. And then we do have more showers spreading in. Tomorrow doesn't look too bad, to be honest, but a few showers around in the west. And then we see another weather front approach for Tuesday evening into Wednesday. Again, fizzling out as it heads eastwards. And then we again, again just see more heavier rain and weather front spreading in from the northwest to the southeast. And you can see a lot of showers around with the sort of polar maritime um, sectors coming in for the UK. If we do also finally have a look at the max temperatures, See this afternoon, we saw temperatures getting up to around 18, 19 degrees. Fairly pleasant um, in the sunshine. However, as you see the rain, it's going to feel pretty chilly, of course. By Monday afternoon, again, maybe temperatures 20, 21 degrees in a few spots. But where we have showers, of course, it's going to be cooler. And, of course, with some cloud as well. By Tuesday afternoon, maybe 20, 21 degrees, in fact. Feeling pretty pleasant across England and Wales. Of course, we have that higher pressure building in. And we do have... Um, some warmer upper air temperatures, which would give in the summer probably temperatures up into the mid to high 20s. But of course, sun strength is diminishing, getting longer nights, um, so it doesn't mean we don't keep that heat around for, uh, as much. By Wednesday afternoon, you can see temperatures 20, 21 degrees potentially in the south once again, but cooler into the north. By, th by, uh, by Thursday afternoon, you can see temperatures once again, maybe 16, 17 degrees in the far south, but feeling colder in from the north. And finally, by the right, right towards the end of the run, towards the third of, uh, uh, towards the twenty fourth of September, you can see quite chilly overnight temperatures. So we do have cooler air coming in from the northwest. You can see mid to high single digits for many areas, maybe a tad, a tad colder across northern Scotland.
So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you go out and enjoy um, the warmer weather we may have, uh, especially in England over the coming days. Do go out and enjoy it because we could be seeing, of course, maybe some real autumnal and even maybe some hints of winter coming. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to you and I'll see you again for another video soon.